the purpose of your life, my friend, must be to live a life of purpose. But the question is, how, sir? Everyone is saying you have the potential, but how do we ensure that the potential that we have gets manifest? That's the million dollar question. How? That's the question. We will have to find that question and we will have to get an answer. So, do we all agree that upgradation is required? Yes or no? Now, Dr. Anwar sir, talked of one point. Change, 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 change. What is this change? And he was also asking, why are we talking about upgradation at all? My friends. Today, things are not as they were yesterday. Tomorrow, things will not be as they are today. In technical term, we say we live in an age of obsolescence. Obsolescence. Things are becoming redundant. Imagine the kind of mobile we had 10 years ago. Imagine the kind of desktop we had 10 years ago. Things have changed. Hence, there is a need for upgradation. Since everything is in a state of flux, everything is changing every moment, if you want to stay in a civilized society, you have got to upgrade. Don't you think so? There is a need to upgrade. But how will we upgrade? You can upgrade only when you are convinced first of, of the need to upgrade. Let me tell you a story. There was an old fisherman. He was very funny. He was funny because every time, please listen to this story, a simple story can transform your life. And this is related to the topic we are talking about of creation of skills for future managers. Every time the old man caught a fish and hit the fish wall very big, he let the fish back into water. There was a small girl observing this old man. This poor girl was bewildered, was confused. Why is this old man living big fish back into water? and goes home only with a small fish. What would be the reason? Yes, what would be the reason is what I'm asking you. The old man, whenever he caught a big fish, he left it back into water and he went home only with a small, small fish. Yes, what would be the reason? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, wonderful. He says, your friend says, big fish gives birth to small fish but let us not forget, the breed, you know, will give birth only to the same breed. No, if it is Rehu, Rehu will give birth only to Rehu. So it doesn't matter whether it is a big fish or a small fish. But, good. And every time somebody responds, in my session, I appreciate in a very different way, and that is by clapping. I don't know whether you will clap or not, but I clap for that. Okay, I'm happy you all follow. Yes. The question is, why was the old man living big fish back into water? Yes, you must dare to speak. Don't bother. There is nothing called right answer or wrong answer. An answer is an answer, my friends. Okay? An answer is an answer. Yes. Why was he living big fish back into water? Please. Because he wanted to check his luck. He wanted to check his luck. Once again, we have to clap for him. Please do that. I'm not saying whether they are right or not. We are appreciating the effort they are making. Yes, this century belongs to the girls and there is no response from them. Oh my God, it's surprising. Yes, yes. The question is why, why is the old man living with fish back into water? Please. Yes, go on. Confidence is your life, my friend. You do not exist without confidence. All right, he says, big fish would produce many more small fish. Good enough? All right. <laughs> this young girl was very curious to know why is this old man so crazy? Why is he living all 
big fish back into water. He comes to the old man and says, Uncle, uncle, you have to tell me the reason why are you leaving big fish back into water? Is it not stupid? Is it not stupid? And the old man gives an equally funny answer. He says, the frying pan I have at home is too small. The frying pan I have at home is too small. Yes. Now, what is the relevance? What is the relevance of this story? Relevance of this story relates to how will we upgrade our skills. Question is very clear here, and the answer is loud and clear as well. That the frying pan is in really with each one of you. You are carrying a frying pan. This is your frying pan, and how far will you go, and how far will you succeed in upgrading your skills, depends on the size of your frying pan. Take care of your frying pan, my friends. Invest something, do something to expand your frying pan, and life will not be the same again. There was a time in the past when physical might was required. Body. But today, it is not a physical might, it is a mental promise. It is a part of your mind that will decide how far you go in life. So that's the message. Now the question is, what is this skill? Point number two, we are talking about observation and the B. What is the skill? Is the skill the same as knowledge? Is knowledge a skill? Is it skill knowledge? Think quickly. I want that at the end of the session you understand what is the skill and what this topic is all about, at least. Yes. Tell me, what is this skill? Is the skill knowledge? And knowledge is skill? Quick, quick answer, please. Tell me. Knowledge is skill and skill is knowledge. Yes. Knowledge is skill, sir. All right, hear me. We have a response. Knowledge is skill. Let's clap for the for her. All right. Anyone else who has a response? What is the skill? Yes, please give the mic. Yes. Knowledge will increase our skills, sir. Knowledge increases the skill. So what you are saying is skill does not exist without knowledge. Give a big hand. All right, let's understand. Once Francis Bacon, who was an essayist of Sixteenth Century, he said, knowledge is power. Believe me, knowledge is no power today. Knowledge is not power at all. You'll say, come on, sir. Most of the teachers say knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. Otherwise, all teachers would have been the most powerful people in the world, more powerful than Barack Obama or our Prime Minister. But so is not the case because knowledge is not power. Knowledge becomes power only when apply into a context. It is the application of knowledge which makes all the difference. The knowledge you have is of no use unless and until you are able to apply your knowledge. It is here a skill becomes important because a skill is nothing but the application of knowledge. Okay. What is a skill? Application of Knowledge. If you want a more technical definition, I would say a skill means ability to do something well. Ability to do something well. I teach you everything about driving a car and you cannot drive the car simply with the knowledge of rules or do's and don'ts. Can you try? No. You need practice. And then comes the importance of application of knowledge. And that is how a skill is different from knowledge. Now, we are talking about future managers. Future managers. When we talk about management, when we talk about a manager, conventionally, they have certain role to play. And those roles, conventionally, traditionally, and those roles are, number one, they have to plan. 
A manager has to plan. A manager has to be a part of recruitment and selection. A manager has to be a part of organizing, planning, recruitment, organization, and training, and motivating, which some of the speakers yesterday and today have done, including me perhaps, motivating and control. These are six conventional roles of managers. Today we have to understand a manager has to deliver and give more because that's the need of the hour. Change is a constant reality and therefore it is not possible or a manager cannot thrive only by playing these conventional roles. They'll mangle more. Have you heard of this? They'll mangle more. So the society wants and demands more out of it. Manager and hence the debate on the need for upgradation of skills. Now, you will all like to know, sir, good enough what you are telling, but how? Be very precise, sir. Tell us how do we improve our skills? How can we own our skills? Give us some tips, sir, before you go. I'm sure many of you want to know, and then I'll have to tell you it's another story. And this story had nothing to do with an old man or a fish. Right? Please listen to the story. There was a young man, because here I see only young people around, buying a couple of them. They are also equally young, including me. Now, a young man in the desert of Rajasthan. I also come from Rajasthan, I was there for some time, and he is very thirsty. The young man on the desert of Rajasthan is very thirsty, is looking desperately for water here and there and not getting. He collapses. And after some time, he can see a hand pump in the desert. The moment he sees the hand pump, he goes running with all might, with all energy. He reaches the hand pump. He is very happy, but he presses the hand pump. Unfortunately, no water is coming from the hand pump. He is disappointed. No? And then there is a saving grace. He sees a glass of water kept near the hand pump. He is so happy. Immediately wants to take hold of the glass, but then there is a notice board. No, when you have a holiday, the college management puts a notice board not to go out. Well, something like that. I don't know about this management, but. So there is a notice board there as well, and that says, pour this water into the hand pump, and water will come from the hand pump. Now he's confused, he's very thirsty, he's dying of thirst, and the message says, pour this water into the hand pump, and water will come. What will you do now? If you were in this place, what will you do? You will place, you will put the water into the hand pump or drink. What will you do? We couldn't hear, please. Yes. You will drink the water or pour? No, I will drink. You will drink. Okay. Then? I will not drink. What will you do? You will pour. Good. Why? We can drink. Okay, good, good enough. Please clap for it. All right. Anyone else? You will pour the water or drink is the question. Very simple. Either this or that. Yes. Quick, tell me. Quick response. You will pour or drink? Yes. One glass of water is enough to quench my thirst. So, so you will drink. All right, you will drink. So we have two answers. We have two answers to my left. She says, I will pour. You have an answer? I will pour in the pump. You will pour. Why? Because others also have to get drink now. So we have to keep the uh, one tumbler of water there. Okay. So after drinking, I will uh, okay, So you are a very kind hearted person. It says, all right. Okay. You are thinking about others. You are thinking about others. Now, the question is whether, whether a young man who is thirsty, who is dying of thirst, will pour the water into the hand pump or drink. This young man decides to 
decides to pour the water into the hand pump. But lo and behold, he pours the water and no water is coming from the hand pump. He is growing disappointed again, but he had attended one of my sessions in which I had said, persist to succeed. Very simple words I said, persist to succeed. And he remembered those three words, persist to succeed. So he keeps on, you know, keeps on, and then a lot of water gushes forth from the hand pump. He's jubilant. He takes bath, he drinks plenty of water, and keeps one glass back and writes, yes, it works. He adds another sentence, yes, it works. My question is very simple from you now. What is the takeaway from this story? Quick, is there a takeaway or not? Any takeaway from this story? What is the message? Any message? Maybe because he tried and uh, it could have been uh, a, a negative answer also, but he didn't try so he came across a new conclusion maybe? All right. He remained positive. He could have thought negatively and not poured the water. That's the answer. Any other takeaway from the story? One more response I want. Yes. That is what uh, she has said, you know. So that's already covered. I don't want to repeat. Yes. Anything else? The takeaway from the story, anyone? He took the risk for the wager. My friends, let us not forget, I am talking about a particular topic and that is a skill of the relation for future managers and whatever I say has to have relevance to the topic. And the relevance lies in the fact, unless and until you invest, unless and until you learn to invest in life, life will not give you back. Today we have forgotten to invest in life. If you have forgotten, I have to remind you, Brihat Bharat and Kupanishad. And these lines are also quoted by an Angrej, Angrej you know, and he got Nobel Prize. People outside India are referring to our scriptures and getting Nobel Prize, and we are forgetting our roots, and those lines are Datta, Datta, Dayadham, Dhammetam. Datta, Dayadham, Dhammetam, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. That means give, give. That we have forgotten today. So, my friends, any upgradation of the skills will take place only when you understand you have to learn the habit of giving, you have to learn the habit of investing. How many of you invest on yourself? How many of you? Unless and you understand the need that you have to give. First give, invest on yourself. Learn to do that. How many of you go to attend workshops, seminars, talks, journals, and you say, there is no job. There is no job. I met Mr. Narayan Murthy in Bangalore recently, and he's notorious for making a comment that 85% of our graduates are not employable. He has a point. But the question is, why? Why are students like you are not employable? Do you ever think about that? It is not enough for me to tell you, be positive, be positive. No! There is always a reason for everything that happens in life. There is a reason for every reason, my friend. And you need to understand the reason. And the reason is, we have forgotten to invest and we have to learn to invest. That is what upgradation of skills is all about. It's point there. And the last point, I have to make because of the paucity of time. And the last point is how, how all this will happen. Don't you think, sir, the environment is too negative? Don't you think, sir, that the management is doing, but it is not doing, you know, as much as it should do? So, where should it begin? Where should it begin? So, allow me to share one more story, and that will be my concluding story with you. Yes. I'm sure you love listening to stories. All right. There is a small child. He studies in class fifth. He's very naughty. His parents are fed up. The society is also fed up with him, but he's very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. He comes to know about one Mahatma Ji, and today he decides that I'll teach Mahatma Ji addition. He puts one small girl in his hand, like in a fist, and he goes to the Mahatma Ji. And today he wants to expose that Mahatma Ji. And he goes and asks, Baba, Baba, tell me the bird I have in my hand is 
alive or dead. Is alive or dead? He had a plan. The bird was alive, you know. He thought, in case Baba says, the bird is dead, I will not do anything. And if he says, the bird is alive, I quickly press my fist and I will prove Baba wrong. But he is a true Baba, I must tell you. He is not a fake Baba. He understands and says, Balak, it all depends on you. It all depends on you whether you want to see the bird alive or dead. It is all in your hand. So my friends, it is your life. It is your life. If you decide to upgrade your skills, if you decide to make a difference in life, life will not be the same again. Life will not be the same again. Decision has to be yours. This is your life. But you need to understand one thing. What's your name? Milosh. What I want Milosh to understand, there might be many Milosh, many guys with the name of Milosh, but what I want him to understand, there was no another Milosh who came on this earth before this Milosh, and there will not be another Milosh who will come on this, on this earth. You are so unique, you are so different. Destiny has created you at a particular point of history on a purpose. Find that purpose.